This past month, Tesla has begun rolling out the latest software of its full self-driving beta, 10.69, while at the same time Elon Musk has increased the price of the software package from $12,000 to $15,000. Tesla has come a long way since its early days of autopilot. Initial versions of the software from back in 2014 used the Mobileye IQ3 chip which allowed the Tesla Model S to detect road signs, lane markings, vehicles, and other obstacles. The partnership between the two companies later dissolved in 2016, with Mobileye, now owned by Intel, stating that Tesla was pushing the envelope in terms of safety, essentially trying to use Mobileye's driver assistance system as a driverless system as per Mobileye's statement. According to Elon Musk, it took Tesla just six months to rewrite the base of Mobileye's visual processing technology, although some features still took months, if not years, to make their way back into consumer vehicles. Tesla switched to using the NVIDIA Drive PX2 chip in 2016, which is known as Tesla Hardware 2.0, and allowed Tesla to begin processing up to eight cameras and radar, whereas previously with the Mobileye Hardware 1.0, the processing was only being done on a single camera along with forward-facing radar. Then in 2019, Tesla dropped NVIDIA's chip for their own in-house custom-made chip known as Hardware 3.0 and they began removing radar on their vehicles starting in mid-2021. Tesla's approach to visualizing and understanding the road is ingrained in training neural networks using information from hundreds of thousands of Tesla drivers. Tesla collects data from its fleet and relies solely on its classic 8-camera setup for vision. On the other hand, competitors such as Google's Waymo and GM's Cruise, which is powered by Mobileye, train their neural nets using a small number of highly trained drivers and also rely on radar, lidar, and centimeter-level three-dimensional HD maps in their automated vehicles. This is one of the reasons why these companies have had a difficult time scaling because they require numerous and expensive sensors to be retrofitted into a small set of vehicles. This in turn limits the amount of data that can be collected to train neural nets at a high scale since they're only focused on small areas of certain cities. Tesla's approach factors in an economic aspect and fits in with the quote any idiot can build a bridge that stands, but it takes an engineer to build a bridge that barely stands. This is to say that with infinite materials and labor, a bridge can be built. But with realistic budget and resource constraints, building a bridge that encapsulates just what is needed will save money and perhaps even time for the client. With regards to autonomous vehicles, it's easy to add cameras and lidars and radars and retrofit hardware and then hire dedicated specialists to drive them around the city collecting tens of miles of data. However, to reach millions of people in a cost-effective way, Tesla is essentially just using the minimum number of cameras they believe are required plus specialized software to train and scale their AI. Elon Musk stated in 2016, Full autonomy is really a software limitation. The hardware exists to create full autonomy. So it's really about developing advanced narrow AI for the car to operate on. And so this scale in growing the fleet is a very important piece for feeding that data back into Tesla's system in a continuous cycle of advancing their AI. Tesla's FSD beta software has made massive progress since it was released in 2020 and is now being pushed to over 160,000 vehicles, recently up from 100,000, and is expected to expand further this year in 2022. Elon Musk and the team at Tesla also just celebrated a milestone of delivering 3 million electric cars, a testament to Tesla's ability to rapidly scale. But this means that there are now 3 million potential customers for Tesla's FSD software on the road today and this number is expanding quickly as Tesla's vehicle deliveries grow. With the current run rate, they're adding about 1.5 million new vehicles each year, all equipped with the hardware necessary for full self-driving. This is leading to powerful business models, such as subscriptions, since Tesla is able to put the needed hardware into every car, whether the customer pays for it or not, up front. 
This consistency is also important for manufacturing at scale and even for reducing complexity with different versions of software. For example, other companies may need to decide if it's worth it to build some cars with expensive LiDAR units and match them up with buyers that want the bundled software features that LiDAR would give them. At Tesla, all the cars are the same in terms of software capability. Now at $15,000 for FSD, Tesla will have massive gross margins since they've been able to keep costs low, and they can flip FSD on or off with software. And although this number may seem steep, Elon Musk is dead set on creating a robo-taxi network on the back of this software, which would unlock an entire new industry, creating further revenue-generating opportunities for Tesla, but also for the customers of FSD that wish to have their vehicles work for them and act like Uber drivers. However, in order to create a robo-taxi network, Tesla's FSD software needs to be impeccable at driving. Each of today's interventions, where a human needs to step in and take over for the vehicle, basically need to go away since each of these occurrences could result in a crash if in the future there's no driver sitting in the front seat monitoring the vehicle. The FSD software needs to be better than a human if not 10 times safer as Elon Musk has said many times in the past. This is a high bar in order to hit six or seven nines of reliability, but today Tesla is pushing the envelope in terms of safety. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Contained in Tesla's version 10.69 of FSD Beta is their first implementation of a fairly new paradigm that Tesla is internally calling occupancy networks. Tesla's director of autopilot software, Ashok Eliswamy, gave a presentation just last month at CVPR, which is the Conference for Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition that provides workshops and courses in order to deliver information and research for academics and even industry researchers. The concept of occupancy networks is not something that Tesla has invented from scratch, but rather something that Tesla is building upon from other people's research and sharing their own findings and implementations related to their own use cases, specifically with Tesla's FSD software. It appears that occupancy networks have been presented at CVPR at least since 2019 and has been refined year after year with new research papers. The purpose of occupancy networks is to reconstruct 3D scenes and this can be done from single images, noisy point clouds, or lower resolution voxel grids where voxels are pixels in a 3D space. In 2020, this was improved upon with convolutional occupancy networks that could scale to large, more complex scenes. Tesla appears to have their own implementation based off this previous research. Tesla stitches together its eight camera scenes and is able to query its system to ask whether or not a voxel is occupied and predict the volumetric occupancy of an object. They can also calculate something called occupancy flow, which is the change in occupancy over time. This allows them to predict the movement of each point into the future, and this is done in 3D space on Tesla's video data rather than individual images or frames. This provides a level of robust protection against all kinds of obstacles according to a shock. And as an example, with less compute power, FSD's ability to estimate the speed and direction of vehicles crossing intersections at a distance has improved by 20% as a result of using this occupancy network technique. This is also how Tesla is able to detect a UFO landing in the middle of the road because they can look at the space and see that it's occupied. Now these occupancy networks are used both in car in real time and in the data center. In the data center, they can run the full version since there's no time or processing constraints, plus they have more processing power. So they can use it to provide supervision while they're training their other networks. Also, according to Ashok, in the car, there's a reduced version running in the background that's checking to make sure that the occupancy network being produced correctly matches up with the sensor data that the vehicle is receiving. This has major implications with collision avoidance. Tesla says that autopilot already prevents an average of 40 accelerator misapplications every day. So it's already saving lives with few people knowing and autopilot safety software is enabled on every Tesla vehicle. So what Tesla is able to do here is query the system and ask, is the car going to be in an accident within two seconds or four seconds or whatever is requested? 
and the software can very quickly return this information within microseconds and then tell the car to take an action to avoid a collision. So in a sense, Tesla's stack puts them on a path to develop this software such that the vehicle eventually never crashes, or at least the vehicle can do its best to avoid or minimize a crash. Of course, if some high-speed UFO flies right into the car, it's obviously going to crash into it, since the vehicle has no other choice and isn't fast enough to react, but it won't be Tesla causing the accident. Some crashes are unavoidable, but this concept is sort of like taking a video game monster AI computer player that can avoid pretty much anything and applying it to driving. So that's very exciting in terms of safety. Now on August 14th, Tesla's competitor in the autonomous space and former partner Mobileye, their chief technology officer, Shai Shalev Schwartz, congratulated Tesla on FSD's progress. This was actually before the 10.69 release even went out to customers. However, in the same tweet, he pointed out, the Mobileye supervision product shares the same camera-based approach as Tesla, but differs in a number of ways, including using high-definition maps instead of a standard definition one, using a math-based driving policy versus simulation-based, and has multiple redundant systems as opposed to a single one like Tesla. Let's take a look a little more closely at each of these. The CTO states that humans drive better when they are familiar with the road ahead. But then he says, we can plan way in advance for the curves ahead or for occluded areas in an intersection. We could use the rear camera when there's a low sun in front and still know the lanes ahead. Now this is a cool trick since Mobileye uses an HD map and can find certain landmarks using the rear camera to position itself within the map and thus based on the map data knows where all the lanes are and the other static road elements. However, much of driving is dynamic, so this doesn't help if, say, there's a pedestrian crossing the street in front of the car. You still need to use the front-facing sensors to detect that. And so the HD map is useful in some cases, but the vehicle's camera game must still be on point. This also shows that Mobileye's camera approach is very different from Tesla's. While they still use machine learning, the core function of the cameras is to detect landmarks to position the vehicle within the HD map. Tesla, on the other hand, has no HD map so they need to rely purely on vision. This is a much more challenging problem since the only information they have is what the car sees, and there's no way to get around this using LiDAR or the rear camera plus HD maps, neither of which Tesla has. And they also don't want it because these shortcuts help in some cases but only get you so far. During AI Day, Tesla showed that they were in a sense able to teach the software to still see or detect objects even under poor viewing conditions, and this has allowed them to remove the radar completely from their vehicles. Since Mobileye's camera plus HD map solves just a piece of the problem, they still need radar and LiDAR for certain use cases. Mobileye appears to be doing a little bit of everything, whereas Tesla just has cameras, and so this focused approach has pushed Tesla's camera-only software to levels far beyond the industry competitors. In a test drive through Europe, Mobileye says that they ran their test vehicle in mapless mode, relying only on cameras for a large portion of the drive, and they say they only required occasional and minimal human intervention. They say the car spent hours crawling through traffic with no human intervention. This is very impressive for Mobileye. Now there are some things to point out, which is that crawling through traffic is a fairly simple use case since there's usually a lead car in front that shouldn't be crashed into and surrounding lane lines. There's a vast array of use cases beyond this, however, that won't be encountered when driving a test vehicle. One of Tesla's major advantages is that its FSD beta software is now running on 160,000 customer vehicles. And while still in beta, Tesla has been working to refine the driving for real customers, which is very different than a trained test driver. The number of interventions is exacerbated when scaling up five orders of magnitude, something that Mobileye has yet to come across. Solving that last 1% of interventions is the most difficult thing. It may take 99% of the resources in order to do that. Going back to the tweet from Mobileye's CTO, he states that the worst case scenarios are calculated using a set of assumptions in the behavior of other road users and then using math formulas instead of simulating multiple futures. However, the difficult part of this is accurately visualizing the surrounding environment. Tesla uses its neural network for this, 
but they also said that no neural networks are needed in the final computation of their occupancy network, which is designed for analyzing the behavior of surrounding objects to protect against the crash. So Tesla's system is also very much based in mathematics. The mobilized CTO says that Tesla's system relies on one big hydronet, which is only one solution. We believe in redundancy. Every piece of our system is solved by more than one approach. Now this may be misunderstanding Tesla's approach, since although Tesla is using just cameras, they still have high redundancy. For instance, multiple cameras. If one camera doesn't see something, another one will. There are also three forward-facing cameras. As a matter of fact, it would be interesting in the future if Tesla could train their neural nets to still work even with a missing camera and still get driving to be better than a human, at least over time. Tesla also has redundant chips processing the data in the vehicle, and they have multiple algorithms running that can verify each other. Again, the occupancy network is a perfect example of this, where Tesla stated that it's used to verify that the in-car occupancy maps can explain the sensors that the vehicle is receiving. Now, both companies have made great strides using different approaches, but Tesla is banking on cutting out radar, LiDAR, and HD maps putting all their bets on cameras in order to not only keep costs low to deliver this consumer product, but also to focus on the most critical software piece, which boils down to pure camera vision. There's of course much left to be done, handling many types of edge cases and possible collisions, but Tesla believes that their new occupancy networks will have massive benefits and continue to advance them in the right direction. So do you think that self-driving vehicles that never crash are possible in the future? And which approach, Mobilize or Tesla's, will be the first to achieve large-scale robo-taxi networks for consumers in the future? If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe since we have more related content coming leading up to Tesla's AI Day 2. Please hit the like button, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.